today we are going to discuss about the superposition theorem so here for this circuit i want to determine the current through the 2.2 kilo ohm resistance by using superposition theorem okay before solving this problem by using superposition theorem i want to solve this problem by using mesh analysis thereafter i want to verify this result with the superposition theorem okay now first see the how to solve this problem by using mesh analysis okay now how many loops are present in the circuit two loops okay now for first loop i am assuming the current direction as clockwise direction and for second loop i am assuming it as anti clockwise direction okay and this current as i1 and this current as i2 okay now see here 5 volt is voltage raised in this loop 10 volt is voltage raised remaining all are voltage drops why because always at passive elements there is a drop okay now write the loop one equation this is my loop one now see here at one which current is flowing only i1 so it is one into i1 plus if you observe this 2.2 this is connected between i1 and i2 that means loop one and loop two now how these currents are flowing at 2.2 how it is flowing i1 is downward direction i2 is here i2 is moving like this moving like this at this branch it is moving in the downward direction both are in the same direction if the currents are in the same direction we need to add the currents so that's why it is i1 plus i2 into 2.2 see here is equal to voltage rise is 5 we read this equation 3.2 into i1 plus 2.2 i2 is equal to 5 this is my equation one okay next similarly write the loop 2 equation see here at this branch again both are same direction so it is 2.2 into i2 plus i1 see here plus here it is 1 into i2 is equal to order as is 10 okay now we read this equation 2.2 i1 plus 3.2 i2 is equal to 10 now solve this equation 1 i equation 2 then you will get i1 is equal to minus 1.11 i2 is equal to 3.88 milliamps okay now our requirement is current through 2.2 kilo ohm resistance okay now at 2.2 which current is flowing either i1 or i2 here both the currents are flowing that is i1 and i2 and both are in the same direction so that is the reason we need to add the currents that is i1 plus i2 now the result is 3.88 here it is minus so it is 3.88 minus 1.11 now the answer is 2.77 milliamps here the current direction is very very important here both are in the downward direction so that is the result way that is the reason why result is in the downward direction while determining the superposition theorem problem the direction c is very 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 important okay now here 2.77 milliamps downward direction okay now this is direct inspection method i want to solve the same problem by using the superposition technique now see the superposition theorem technique now while determining the current through any branch by using superposition theorem simply we need to activate only one source at a time remaining source must be deactivated that means how many sources are present in the circuit v1 and v2 two sources are present in the circuit okay in case one activate v1 deactivate v2 how to deactivate v2 just short circuit the voltage source okay oh, if you want to deactivate the sources the current source must be open circuit voltage source must be short circuit here we don't have any current source we have only voltage source so that's why we need to short circuit this voltage source v2 okay in case one okay now see this case one that means source v1 is acting okay that means here v2 is short circuited so here in the circuit there is a v2 but here v2 is short circuited okay now determine the current to this r2 by using any technique so here i am using the mesh analysis for this i am assuming this loop current as clockwise direction and current as i1 and this loop current as the clockwise direction and current as i2 and write the loop equation okay similar to previous case only similar to this case only we are writing the loop equation severe here there is no change in loop one same loop one so you will get the same results here 3.2 i1 3.2 i1 plus 2.2 i2 is equal to 
okay whereas here this is short circuited so that is the reason instead of 10 you will get zero that's it there is no change here it is short circuited that means zero so here 2.2 i1 plus 3.2 i2 is equal to previously here there is a 10 volts is there but here we don't have any 10 volts it is simply zero okay now this is equation one and equation two if you solve these two you will get i1 as 2.96 i2 as minus 2.0 zero three milliamps okay now what is our requirement current through this 2.2 kilo ohms okay which current is flowing through this one i1 i i2 both the currents are flowing then how these two are flowing whether downward or upward otherwise opposite direction we need to identify that now at this branch i1 is downward direction why because the current is flowing like this flowing like this here it is downward and I2 current is flowing like this, flowing like this, flowing like this. And here it is downward direction. Both are in the same direction. So we need to add these two currents. So it is 2.96 minus 2.0. Why? Because already it is minus. Less of minus it will become minus. So 2.96 minus 2.03. It will become 0 0.93 milliamps in downward direction. Why? Because both are in the downward direction. Result also in the downward direction. Okay, this is V1 is activated. Next, what we need to do, we need to activate V2. See here, source V2 is activate. Source V2 activate means V1 must be deactivated by short circuit. See here, here V1 is short circuited. See here, in the problem, here we have, we have V1. Here V1 is short circuited. Okay, again, write the equation. Okay, similar to this one only. Why? Because, see here, everything is same. Only V1 is equal to zero substitute here. See here. Instead of 5, substitute 0. If you observe here, 1 in 3.2 I1, 3.2 I1. Plus 2.2 I2, plus 2.2 I2. Instead of 5, we got 0. Okay. Next, if you observe loop 2, see here, 2.2 I1, 2.2 I1, plus 3.2 I2, 3.2 I2. Is equal to 10, is equal to 10. Why? Because here, this value is 10. Okay. Now, again, solve this equation 1 and equation 2. You will get I1 and I2 as like this. Okay. Now, our requirement is current to this 2.2 kilo ohm resistance. Again, how the current is moving here in this problem, in this circuit, I am assuming this is the current direction. And here, this is the current direction. Okay. And this is my... I2. And this is my I1. By using these directions, I written these equations here. 1 into I1 plus 2.2 into I1 plus I2 is equal to 0. Similarly, for these loops here, 10 is equal to 2.2 I2 plus I1 plus 1 into I2. Okay. Now, these are the directions. So, here, how the current is flowing this 2.2 only? This is downward direction. I2 also downward. Both are same direction means we need to add these two currents. That means 5.92. Here, plus of minus is minus. So 5.9 to minus 4.07. It will become 1.85 milliamps downward direction. Okay. Now we got IAB dash as well as IAB double dash. Okay. Now see here. Now what is the supervision theorem statement? Total response is equal to the sum of the individual responses. Now this is the individual response. That means whenever the source is acting alone. This is also individual response whenever the source is acting alone. Now, if you add these two responses, if you add these two responses, that is the total current. Now, see here, total current is equal to this IAB dash plus IAB double dash. Now, it is 0.93 plus 1.85. It is 2.77 milliamps. Both are in the same direction. So, that is the reason we are adding. And see here, here, IAB double dash downward. IAB also downward. So, that's why we need to add. If, if it may be opposite, may be same. Okay, and if it is opposite, we need to subtract. If it is same, addition. But in this case, both are in the same direction. That's, that's why I added these two elements. Okay, now I got the values 2.77 milliamps downward direction. Why? Because both are in the downward. Result also downward. If you observe here, 2.77, 2.77. Hence, this superposition term is verified. Okay, similarly, you can... Take this one as 10 volts, this one as 15 volts, this one as 15 volts, this one as 20 volts, and you can solve the same procedure. Then you will get same result. That means direct inspection method is equal to superposition technique. You will get same result. But in this case, I take any value as 5 volts, 
10 volts. V1 as 5 volts, V2 as 10 volts. Now I got the result as 2.7 direct inspection method and 2.7 by using superposition technique. In both the cases, we got the same result. So that is the reason why superposition is verified. Thank you.